Hey guys, welcome back to Quick Shift's channel. This is Jason, and today is day two of the light bar and the floodlight pods install. Today we're gonna install the control panel, and we're gonna pop open the hood, run the wires, connect everything up, and see if we can get these to light up. So stick around with us as we go through that process. I'm not good at wiring, so who knows what's gonna happen here. Hopefully we can get this figured out and uh, get these things lit up. We've got the brackets on, the lights installed and mounted up here. We've run the cables down through the crack and through the firewall. Go ahead and pop open the hood. Two wires coming out over here. And one coming out over here. And first thing we're gonna do is disconnect the ground. And, but before we do that, let's walk over here. I wanna show you guys this kit again. So today we're going to be installing the switches and the fuse panel and all of the wiring that comes with this kit. Now this kit does come with two different brackets that you can use that allow you to mount it in two different places under the hood. And if you guys have watched the last fit video, like I've watched, uh, you'll see that there's two different boxes that come if you get the red switches, the full kit. But for us, we just have the black switches, the right hand side of the kit. So we only have the one box to mount in here. And we'll be mounting that again over here on the battery side. So we'll be mounting it right here. All right, so first off, grab a 10 millimeter socket and let's go ahead and back off this connection. The first thing we're gonna do is take this bracket and attach the fuse box to the bracket using the supplied hardware. Got a couple of bolts with washers, one from the inside, one for the outside, and a couple of nuts that will go through these holes and secure those on. Nice and snug. Now that we have that snugly secured, we're going to go ahead, take it over to the side of the Jeep. We're going to have to back this bolt out as it will be mounting right here and here. Grab the 10 millimeter socket again and back this off. And we will be reusing this bolt and using a bolt from the kit for this side. Grab the supplied bolt. Before you run these bolts through here, you'll want to position all of these cables and know that these cables are going to want to come through here, through this side, so you'll want to position them over here. You'll be making a grounding connection here and then the battery connection here. And then we'll be running the other cables up along here and through the firewall over there. So now we've got the cables over here on the left side of this. We're going to go ahead and get these bolts secured back down. Next up, we're going to go ahead and take this ground and we're going to use the 10 millimeter socket, back this off and ground it to there. I've also taken our cables and make sure that nothing's touching or grounding out here. So this will be our power cables that we're going to next hook into here. And then here are the auxiliary leads for under the hood and then power and auxiliary leads that will be running along the firewall down into the cab later on. Now that we've got that secured down here, in the instructions online, last bit says to go ahead and hook your power cables up, but I'm actually gonna save this for last. What I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna finish running the cable, as you see here, run it along the firewall and find that hole down there and run it through there and into the cabin. Then we're gonna go into the cabin and work from there. And we'll come back and do this once we've got all the rest buttoned up. For now, loosely run them across this firewall and we'll come back and secure this in once we've got this installed into the engine, into the cabin. Just in case we need to come back and, and make some changes in it. Now the kit does come with a whole bunch of zip ties that will allow you to secure this into place. 
But for now, we're gonna leave it nice and loose, run it in here, and then find our firewall hole, hole down here and run it through that. Now they do supply a grommet with the kit that you pop out the fixture in there and you pop the grommet in and run this through that keeps moisture and water from coming into the cap. So here's the grommet that's gonna go in place and the cap for the firewall is that piece right there that you gotta pull out. So to get at that plug under the footwell, I'm gonna go ahead and try and push it out from the inside here. And here you go, here's what it looks like. I just took a screwdriver and pushed directly in the center. All right, so go ahead and use some snippers or scissors and cut this hole out here. And then start feeding these back through carefully. You don't want to bend or kink any wires. All right, and then we'll take this and feed it back through the hole through the firewall. Now we've got that started to be fed through there. And go around in the cab and you can see we're pulling them through now up here. Come on through, pull a little extra through so we have plenty of space for things and stuff in here. And I believe next we're going to start taking off the panels and getting to the wiring back behind here and then dropping this panel so we can connect up the power and the lines in here. We next, pull these panels off. And once you've done that, there's a couple cords in here. Go ahead and pull those cords. Then we have a screw here at the top point. Back that out. And then this pulls out. Then on here you have several connections. So we have these two up here. Black ones on the right, silver ones on the left. We have a gray one here. And we have the cigarette lighter over here. Auxiliary switch for the red switches, pull that off. And then we have this main switch. You have to click this over to the side before you can pull that out. And of course, we're just replacing this switch unit here on the side. So to do that, we now have one, two, three, four, little screws we got to take out of here. So we'll take that to the bench and swap these out. We grab a 5.5 millimeter socket. Now this kit by LazFit, I've got to say it's been fitting really well. Um, I like how they've wrapped the cables. I wish they were in some cord like this, but maybe we can add that later. Right now, let's just get it installed get everything tested out, make sure everything works. But it's still really clean. And it, it's not gonna look like a sloppily put together kit. So then once those bolts are out, pull this right off. And of course, our new switches are going right in. Has that OEM look. It's exactly what we wanted. So then we put these bolts back in. These are holding plastic together, so I wouldn't worry about going nuts on torquing these down. I would get them just to where you feel them stop going in. So they're nice and secure. Hand snug is what I'm going with. All right, so that's in there. So now let's take this back over to the Jeep and start plugging things back in. Now that we've got this panel back together, we're gonna go ahead and pull this panel off of the Jeep. We've got this panel off over here and the wire's exposed. Now we're gonna hook up the fuse box, the lighter adapter, and the power cord, which will connect to the cord that we just brought through the firewall earlier.
All right, so one, two, three, four, five, and these two cords on top, except for the power cord here, that's going to connect in down there. I'm going to go ahead and fish this through. Once we've got that in, we want to take our fish through cord and connect our power line here. And we'll go ahead and connect these together. So at this point, we do have all our things connected. We want to connect in our power here and our start button. And before I button this all up, I'm going to go ahead and connect the two power lines to the battery and test this battery or test the switches out. And if the switch works, then uh, we'll go ahead and put our screw back in here and put the dash back together. This is a 10 millimeter again. All right. All right, guys, so now that we've got the power hooked up to the battery and everything's plugged in here, and I temporarily set this up here so we could try this out, we're going to go ahead and power up the Jeep. And with the power on, we're going to hit some buttons and see if this lights up like it's supposed to. All right. Looks like it's working. So now all we have to do is take this panel back off, put the bolt in it, Clean up our cables down here, find a place to hide these auxiliary because we're not going to use the ones in the cabin today. And then wire up the gauge pods or the light pods and the light bar to the auxiliary cords under the hood. Run that back in. There we go, that's back in. And down here, we'll clean up the wiring that's under here and zip tie it out of the way and put this panel back on. Just like the last fit video, I'm gonna go ahead and loosen this bolt and this bolt here so I can run this cable behind this bracket. That'll allow it to look a little bit cleaner. Just lift that up, get the cable underneath, and then place this back on. Because on me, I'm going to zip tie my cable into place under this bracket just to keep it away from heat and keep things cleaner. And I'll also keep things from rubbing around, wearing out, that sort of thing. I'll run these 10 milliliter bolts back down on top. My nuts. And now what we need to do is connect our light fixtures, all three of these, into the auxiliary switches here. So to do that, I bought some 16 gauge wire so we can run a ground wire for each light and also run the power switch over to the auxiliary switch that we would like to use. All right guys, so now we have to take these pigtail connectors, hook up a ground line and the power line, power line goes to the switch over there and the ground will put onto the ground wire that we hook the fuse box up to. So I've gone ahead and started crimping off the wires using connectors on there and we will make sure that we do a heat wrap over each of those as well just to make sure that everything's nicely sealed up. Again, this is 16 gauge cable, AWG. Wanna make sure we use the right stuff. strong connections and throw the heat wrap on there Then we'll take these two pieces and we'll be running them over there so on this side we're going to be doing the same thing ground wire extended it a little bit from how this Y plug is and uh, the power wire here we're going to do the same thing and then we're going to join the two together using these nifty little clamps two into one wire so we have one ground wire and one power wire which will go to our aux one to power the fog lights
All right, so we get these pushed together and then we cr crimp this, crimp it closed. I'm gonna take our shrimp, shrink wrap, slide it over the top. Now we're gonna get into these cool little fixtures here. So we'll put our ground into one, we put our hot into one. And we grab our cables from down here. And we're essentially gonna do the same thing. Ground into ground, hot into hot. And then from there, we'll take two more wires and our hot will come out of here, docks one, and our ground will ground it to the Jeep. We have the shrink wrap o-ring connector. Go ahead and get that in there and then crimp that down. So we can go ahead and connect this to this 10 millimeter bolt here again. Get a little shrink wrap. And then we'll crimp this down. So before we shrink wrap all that down, I'm gonna go ahead and take our 10 millimeter, ground this, and then we'll uh, give this a little test. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and turn the power on and see if this works. Ta-da, we have power. Now I'll turn around and uh, go back, do all the sh shrink wraps, and then make this look a little bit prettier under the hood there. There we go, we got the wiring done for the three inch pods. Let's go ahead and give it a little test. I'd say it's functioning exactly how it's supposed to. All right guys, so I had to wait a few days until this plug came in because I wanted to make sure that I had an easy way to disconnect the 52 inch light bar without having to undo wiring and this is a watertight connection. This is the fitting that comes on the end. It's a female fitting and it doesn't come with the male. So I did have to pick this up secondhand and I'll have a link to that down below as I'll have a link to the last fit lights, the gauge pods, the mounts and the uh, switch unit. All of that will be down below. Please go ahead and click on those links. It helps us out. And uh, last fit is expecting you guys to come in here if this is a good review. And so far it's been pretty straightforward. I have no issues with it. So what we're gonna do now, I already cut a couple lengths of wire. So I'll have a little bit of extra wire here. I'm gonna put those fittings on there, put them out for the uh, grounding on, on the black wire and mount it here with the rest. And then the red cable is the hot cable. We'll mount it to the auxiliary switch too in this application. And then once it's done with that, I am going to uh, take my wire loom here and I will pretty up all of this in the wire loom so it's not sitting out looking like a, some backyard mechanic put it together. <laughs> so we'll make it nice and pretty and tucked away. So let's go ahead and uh, get these crimped together. And on this end, we'll fit loophole in here. There we go, got our connection. We'll go ahead and take that bolt off, mount this ground, plug these in. I'll tidy this up and then we should be good to go. All right, we got all these connected. So now we'll connect this in. Tuck this neatly out of the way. And at this point, we'll move these tools and I'm gonna go ahead and flick the switches and make sure all the lights work. And if they do, then I'll come back and clean up with the wire loom. So there's our three inch light pods. 
Ta-da! I can see it from here. It's lighting everything up, even in broad daylight. Let's see if they're working together. All right. And here's the switches up here. Now it's hard to tell in this light, but if you can see the lights are on in the vehicle, so the factory stuff all illuminates around it. You guys are familiar with that if you have a Jeep Gladiator. And these switches do the same thing. They light up as well. And when you turn them on and off, just like the factory. Install, pretty straightforward. Takes a little bit of time, especially if you're like me and you wanna make sure the wiring's done right and that you do everything correctly so it doesn't look like a hack job. But uh, all in all, not too bad. You could probably do this in a couple of hours if you're an electrician, no problem. But uh, I went nice and slow and took my time to do it right. Okay guys, so now we're gonna go ahead and tidy up some of this by running some wire loom over everything. There we have it all prettied up. The wire loom's on here. It's all run back behind and tidied it all up. So now we're ready to go out and test them out in the night.